Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Perkins, a principal game designer for Dungeons & Dragons, and we are here today to talk about Ravenloft. What is Ravenloft? It is scary D&D. It's the best D&D storytelling coupled with some of the most memorable villains that D&D has to offer. And it has done this through all of D&D's editions, including Fifth with Curse of Strahd, and now with Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft which traces its origin back to 1983, when two game designers named Tracy and Laura Hickman created an adventure module called Ravenloft, which was a groundbreaking adventure in a lot of ways, namely because it featured a central villain named Strahd von Zerovich. Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft is just the latest visit to the Domains of Dread a book that brings forward some of the classic Ravenloft treats of old and combines it with a few new 5th edition tricks as well. And to talk more about the book, I now hand the ball over to Wes Schneider, the lead designer for Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Hey there, my name's Wesley Schneider and I'm a senior designer here at Wizards of the Coast and I am the lead designer on Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft is Dungeons and Dragons Return to the Nightmare Realms of Ravenloft. The Demiplanes of Dread are a campaign setting that explores a vast variety of horror in the Dungeons and Dragons game. This can be terrifying settings like the gothic horror realm of Barovia, or bizarre mad science like in the lands of Lamordia. Dozens of demiplanes of dread allow you to create the horror experience that's right for you and your group. Beyond just providing a setting for dungeon masters, the book also provides players with a vast variety of options to create haunted characters of their own design. This can be explored through lineages like the Dampir, the Reborn, or the Hexblood, which allow you to have your own measure of monstrousness or a haunted experience of your own design. These stories explore the Dark Lord's pasts and the effects that they have on the entire domains. This means that each domain has a unique flavor of horror to it. Ravenloft has always been known as Dungeons and Dragons home for gothic horror, but with Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, we explore a full spectrum of different types of terror tales. This could mean dark fantasy or body horror bizarreness, or this could mean cosmic cosmic horror and folk horror tales. Here to talk about gothic horror in particular is Dungeons and Dragons senior designer Amanda Hammond. Hello, my name is Amanda Hammond. I'm a senior designer on the Dungeons and Dragons team at Wizards of the Coast, and I was a writer on Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. I wrote the domain sections about Barovia and Lamordia, and I wrote the genre sections about ghost stories and gothic horror. In the Gothic Horror section in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, we go deep into what Gothic Horror is. We talk about how to evoke a sense of Gothic Horror uh, with your stories when you're the DM, and how to build fear and terror into a setting that has a very Gothic Horror feel to it, much in the way that uh, classics of literature that are considered Gothic Horror, that defined the Gothic Horror genre, uh, did in the original novels, such as Dracula from Bram Stoker, Frankenstein from Mary Shelley, and a whole host of others that have inspired fear and terror for many, many generations. In Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, we talk about how gothic horror uh, is something that uh, affects the players, um, as well as the setting and the villains. So when it comes to player characters, for example, gothic horror can be very personal. Uh, it can really prey on the individual fears uh, of players uh, and player characters. So understanding what drives and motivates player characters uh, and what they're wanting to accomplish is very important to you as the DM, which is a thing that we describe in the book and we suggest for example having players decide what's important to them what do they love what do they not want to lose and uh, having the game uh, really draw on that uh, for ways to make the terror uh, more real for those player characters of course in a very responsible way uh, for the players themselves as the dm uh, we also provide lots of 
options for gothic horror plots uh, that you might uh, populate your games with uh, or that you might jump off of to get an idea for the specific types of stories that you want to tell. Uh, there are uh, certainly some ghosts, but also there are vampires, there are werewolves, uh, some serial killers sometimes hiding their tracks uh, through supernatural means. All of these are options within gothic horror stories, and we really love to ratchet the tension uh, and uh, the implied horror before we yank off the curtain. And that is what gothic horror is all about, building up that tension with a big reveal of who the monster is, how monstrous they really are, and what ways they might reflect the, the terror and the rot of the human soul staring back at them. So in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, we have a lot of genre sections, and one of them involves ghost stories. Ghost stories are a very specific type of genre. They have a lot of characteristics that are very recognizable if you're presenting a ghost story tabletop game to your players. Ghost stories deal with the fundamental issues of human existence, the nature of the soul, the way that pain uh, and tragedy echo throughout in reverberations many generations down the line, those are all echoes of ghost stories. Those are all hallmarks of a good ghost story. There are lots of options in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft for different genres. We give you tools for all of them, and ghost stories and gothic horror are just two examples. Hi, my name is Kate Irwin, and I'm Senior Art Director at Wizards of the Coast. I work on Dungeons and & Dragons, and I was the art director for Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. It all starts with the art description. Wes, as the lead, writes the art description, and then he and I meet together. We talk about um, what the contents are so that I can understand what he's trying to get at. And then I take those art descriptions and I um, try to figure out who would be the best artist. Some people love doing monsters. Um, some people really do the gross thing. Some people really can bring elegance to anything. Um, and so it's matchmaking with the art description and the artist. Some of the monsters are really creepy, like you would expect a monster to be. Um, some are really beautiful. Some are just unsettling. I would have to say that my favorite piece of art in the entire book is the spirit board. It has all kinds of wonderful details in it, like the roses and and ravens that are throughout the whole book. There's, there's a theme of ravens. I think one of the things that sets this book apart, it just has a different flavor. Once you get the art in from the artist um, and see how they've interpreted what you think something will be, it adds that extra layer of collaboration on top of it that makes it um, even that much more yummy. While the book provides tons of terrifying tools and techniques, ultimately how they all get woven together is for you to decide. I'm super excited to see how groups take the dark lords, the various domains of dread, the hundreds of adventure hooks, the various monsters, and all of the other techniques that are presented throughout Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, and weaves them together into their own unique nightmares. Thanks so much for watching.